The obvious answer was to take cash instead but such a common sense solution was contrary to company policy so passengers had to go without. Then I tried to renew my car tax online, paying with a card. All went well, well done, DVLA, on an easy to use site, until at the end the card had to be verified and Barclays said it had sent me a code to enter. As has happened on numerous previous occasions the promised code failed to arrive. No code, no car tax and it took me 5 attempts before the code got through. When I complained to the bank on a previous occasion, everyone was helpful but helpless. It seems to be down to potluck whether your code arrives. It is a matter of law that if you are buying children's shoes for adult use you pay VAT. As I take size 2 and a half to 3, I am sometimes in that position and it always causes chaos because the machines are not programmed to charge VAT on those shoes. When I point out that all we need do is calculate the VAT for me to hand over, I am told it is impossible. The machine reigns supreme. Far more sinister is the power that companies can exert over those paying online, as demonstrated by PayPal, which has taken upon itself to cancel customers' accounts and withhold funds simply because it does not like what customers say. Toby Young's Free Speech Union has fallen foul of that censorship, arbitrarily exercised. Machines are good servants but bad masters and we must not become their slaves. Can't see Dan's flaw for crying strictly is back and with it all the tears, tantrums and emotion that seem to have become part and parcel of the program. For heaven's sake, folks, this is a dance competition not a world war, as I often observe during my time on the show. A bit of perspective would be wonderful and just so much more British. Give us a holy break. They are selling min spies already, remarked a fellow customer as I browsed in a small supermarket. Back home, I opened my radio times to find that the Christmas movies channel had already started and will now keep going until the day itself. A commentator remarked that soon Charles would be giving us his first Christmas message as king. For pity's sake, Christmas is still three months away, a quarter of the year away, an entire school term away. Give us a break. Dockers strike Dockers plan to strike at two of our biggest ports and if that hits the Christmas shelves what is the betting that the die-hard Remainers will try to blame Brexit rather than the actions of people who will willingly cause havoc for others in pursuit of their own financial gain? Holly and Phil the latest in a long line of cancel culture casualties I do not know the rights and wrongs of the Holly and Phil Q jumping saga but those calling for them to be sacked have lost all sense of proportion. Why is it, these days, that people always want the ultimate penalty? Censure is never enough, it must always be loss of livelihood. It is not enough that somebody is sentenced to decades of imprisonment, nothing less than a whole life sentence will satisfy the social media witch hunters. Upset the woke with a particular book and all previous books must be pulped too. The quality of mercy is less strained than non-existent to start with. Forgiveness has been put in the bin along with Christianity. Moderation is discarded and misses do as you would be done by is cancelled. Trust must take stand and deliver I will not be voting conservative again until all the Afghan interpreters are out of hotels and properly settled and, crucially, until Northern Ireland is once again part of the UK in trade arrangements. Liz Truss, the low, may be a lion in the treasury, that budget was spectacular, but she is a kitten when it comes to the EU's willful use of Northern Ireland to penalise Britain. She talks about a preference for a negotiated settlement.
We have been trying that for years or haven't you noticed, dearie? She then goes on to wimp that it could take months, as if the option for unilateral action did not exist, and that she and Joe Biden are committed to the Good Friday Agreement, as if that was a reason to give up frictionless trade within the UK. It would be less disappointing if she'd not talked so big about it during her leadership campaign. Time to deliver, Liz.Extra revenue is a big bonus the politics of envy are counterproductive. When Mrs Thatcher reduced the top rate of income tax from 60% to 40% the tax taken from that bracket went up, not down. The same happened when the top rate fell from 50% to 45%, so the Treasury can look forward to some extra revenue, which is good for us all. As for bankers' bonuses, the EU is still stymied by a cap so the UK will become very attractive to serious moneymakers. As the city already contributes tens of billions in taxation the Chancellor can look forward to a lot more. The more money the government has the more it can spend on the NHS or whatever. It is business, enterprise and banking which determine a country's overall economic health and the moaners would do well to remember that.